For the first time in four years, a border crossing between enemy nations, Israel and Syria, has been reopened. The Syrian flag raised at the Cunietra thoroughfare as the United Nations peacekeeping force, UNDOV, sent two white trucks from Syria into Israel. Now, the crossing was shut in 2014 after hostile forces took over the area and UN observers fled due to fierce fighting in the Syrian civil war. Also first thing this morning, another key crossing reopening between Syria and Jordan. The Jabra Nasib crossing on the Jordanian-Syria border, as well as the Kunietra crossing in Israel's Golan Heights, were previously two of the most important trade routes for the governments. Now, their reopening is a victory for the Syrian government, which, backed by Russia, has recaptured large, large swaths of territory from rebels after seven years of a civil war. In studio with me, former commander of IDF 8200 Intelligence Unit, retired Brigadier General Hanan Geffen, and I24 News Senior Middle East Correspondent Mohammed Al Qasim. Pleasure to have you both with us. Mohammed, we'll start with you just for further details. Of course, uh, Kunietra is just one of the two uh, crossings being open today. This is the one uh, from Israel's Golan Heights into Syria. What is going to be used for primarily? Probably uh, at this time, nothing but the UN uh, movement, the UN troops movement. But I think it will get back to its uh, original usage where there will be a produce uh, and uh, Syrian Druze from the uh, Golan Heights who will be going into Syria and, uh, and either going to school or uh, visiting relatives. That's the purpose uh, of it in the, in the past. And I do believe that that's the case eventually here. But at this time, this was a symbolic, symbolic uh, opening today. Mm -hmm. More more so just to show uh, that it's back into operation. The UN used it today, but I think eventually there will be uh, civilians going in and out as well as the UN uh, forces. How does it differ uh, to the, the Jordanian crossing that also opened, reopened today? Well, the, the, the Jordanian crossing, Nasib crossing, is a huge deal, especially for the Syrian government. This uh, signals that Syrian president forces and government is asserting its control over uh, international borders that also as, uh, uh, helps its economy uh, greatly as it uh, desperately needs uh, money coming in and also good news for the Jordanian government as it desperately also needs the commercial uh, uh, movement, the mm -hmm. goods movement between Syria uh, and Jordan where it will either go into Iraq and the Gulf countries. So this is good news uh, all around for the Syrian government, for the Jordanians, uh, but more so uh, for the uh, Syrian government. Sure. And talk us through, Hanan, how the landscape has changed, that Israel's now deemed it appropriate to open its border for the first time in four years with Syria? Yeah, um, well, if you, if you uh, look at the Syrian newspaper, you, you, might, uh, you might think that the Syrian conquered, the Syrian success, uh, Assad is prevailing and so on and so forth. But in reality, what happened is a totally different thing. Uh, Syria is controlled by the Russians. The Russians negotiated the opening of Kunetra. Uh, the Russians negotiated the opening of the Nasib. And actually, the Russians do all their winnings and dealing, and then mm -hmm. let the Syrians in. Mm -hmm. So all the so we have to differentiate it, and uh, and that's go for all the activities right now in Syria. It's controlled by Russians. So it's uh, I agree, uh, Kunetra is symbolic. Sure. But, but maybe for the vacation of the UN forces coming into Israel or the Russians coming to Israel, okay. a meeting point, but it's not more more than that. Speaking of of Russia, Israel's been looking for a commitment uh, from them to at least. Uh, ensure that Iranian forces and their proxies are kept uh, away from Israel's border. Opening this border crossing, be it symbolic or not, what does that reveal around, about an Iranian presence, at least on the border? The Iranian, the Iranian question is, is much, in a, we have to look at it in a much broader context. The context is the, the US and the, and, and the, and the, the Russians, because the, the, one of the preconditions of the Americans to, uh, to let the Syrians come back into, uh, to be a normal country, besides uh, uh, the question of Assad, be or not, is that the Iranians should leave Syria. Not only the Israeli requested, the Iranian, the, the American also requested. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would be the next problems of the Russian when once uh, they finish all the settlements around Idlib and so on and so right. forth. They will be to deal with what is the fate of Assad and right. then the Iranians. The Unless they finish this 
questions, mm -hmm. there will no, Syria will not be uh, restored to a normal position. At least perhaps it speaks that there's no imminent threat and of, of course as you say uh, outside forces will continue to put pressure uh, on, on the Syrian government to ensure and the Russian government to ensure that, the, that these forces don't reach Israel's border. But, but Hanan brought up of course a very important point which is the battle for Idlib. So looking at the timing of this Mohammed, why now knowing that there is in fact a, a battle that still is yet to be had? Well if not now when? I mean that's the question and also the the Battle of Idlib is not really uh, that immediate uh, anytime soon. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't see it. There has been an agreement signed on by the Turkish government and the Russian government. They are both doing joint security and, uh, and military patrols in a, in, a, in a buffer zone around uh, the Idlib uh, province. It looks like even the opposition, including that Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, which is considered uh, the, the, a terrorist group and the arm of al-Qaeda in, in Syria, have kind of agreed to the pressure given to them, uh, given upon them by the uh, Turkish government and they have moved their heavy equipments even closer uh, to the Turkish uh, border and even elsewhere giving a chance that Idlib may not be the next battleground. I think eventually Idlib will Idlib battle will take place mm -hmm. but I don't think it will happen anytime soon mm -hmm. as as long as all uh, opposition groups mm -hmm. including that the Syrian government troops do not engage in any military uh, activities. And, and to that point of course it seemed at one stage that this battle for Idlib was imminent. We also talked a lot about the fact uh, that these, these S-300 air defense uh, systems that were given by the Russians and put into the hands of the Syrians and that uh, the, the US called a, a major escalation. Did it end up turning out to be more of a storm in a teacup, something that was small blown out of proportion? Yes, right. The Russian has to do something because that, that, that was a humiliating fact. The Syrian downed the Russian aircraft, uh, uh, the, the surveillance uh, airplane. So what they did, they, they sent in the S-300, as, as time passes, it's, it seems that it is, is, it, it, it's, um, it's not the best system they have, mm -hmm. it's more, uh, it's short, short range and so on and so forth, and it actually is not against Israel, it's, it's, it, it was more um, kind of, uh, of show, it's turned out to be more uh, show uh, that the Russian, okay, we did something. Okay.